Oh, it's the village. Ooh, what a nice village. I love the music. When we left the forest behind us, the first thought that filled my mind was panic. The city I had lived in whole, my whole life, it was gone. You gotta be kidding me. If I wasn't in Tsukino Toshi, then where the hell did my hometown disappear to? Hey! No talking! Come on, I don't want to bother you that much. Kinda. Maybe a punch or two. I just want to know how the heck you blocked my strike so easily. Your attack had a lot of power behind it, but it was a little bit predictable. Just the right moment, movement, enough pressure behind a counter and that was the result you saw. But anyway, let me play along for a bit. Where in the world are we? This grave is in my hometown. I mean, the buildings look, look, look more like they could be in some sort of classical samurai movie. Huh? What the heck are you... What the heck is a movie? This is Haru, Harumaru. It's been here for years. Hikage, I thought I told you to silence him if he spoke. Actually, you told me that I could do it, but you didn't tell me that I had to. Must be tough being her subordinate. Be silent! I will silence you for good! This time it seemed to not be an idle threat, for the girl unsheathed her katana and presses the tip of the blade against my throat. I already started to regret having played the hero earlier. Hopefully there will be someone with more common sense in the village. Several minutes later. Well. I soon found myself confined within a small room. The stern looking Sundara Tyrant glaring down at me. Oh, I clicked too fast. I cannot go back. Can I go back? One back. Ah, yes. You can go back. I soon found myself confined within a small room. The stern looking Sundara Tyrant glaring down at me while the other girl, seemingly, seemingly called Narumi, had less at least softened up a little. From what I had gathered during their conversation, they had called the village elder to help oversee my questioning. What purpose did these thefts have? Are you just some preferred guy who gets off sniffing girls' undies? I ought to cut them off! I already told you I was at the wrong place at the wrong time. Not to mention anything worn by you would likely smell burnt or taste sour. I couldn't see too well from the cell where they had put me, but I was almost certain I could hear, hear Narumi laughing nearby. Suki no dono. Suki no dono. Please calm down. You brought him in to learn the reason behind his presence in the forest, right? That is correct, Hayate-san. I believe he was working with Kitsune to steal, steal, um, panties and other things. Objection! Huh? What are you, what are you objecting to, sir? The evidence surrounding the defendant's accusation is fabricated. Now, Rumi-san, could you please answer these questions for the judge? Was the defendant, aka myself, anywhere near Kitsune while you two were chasing them? Hold it! Just who are you calling judge here? Stop shouting or I will strike you down! Hey, Miyo-san, maybe the whole angry accusation thing isn't working. This guy is clearly not a bandit, nor a threat. We could just ask him why he was up there in the woods. Ah, <laughs> my voice. My voice. <laughs> it's losing its power. If he has a valid reason, then sure, if not, then he's a panty thief, and we'll use him as a punching bag in the in the yard. <laughs> yeah, I'm so cute. Mm, kawaii. Finally, and here I thought it was about to become a turnabout case. I sighed deeply, partly amused at how, despite the serious situation, I was able to remain calm by acting like several characters I've seen in movies or games i played before. As long as I wouldn't become an ace prisoner, things would hopefully end up well. A wise idea, Narumi-chan. How about you start by giving us your name? Kushiken. Kushiken Takahiro. So why were you inside the forest? While well, our village guards were chasing a pair of thieves. I'm not entirely sure myself. One moment I was praying at a shrine hidden inside the forest. The next moment, I know some weird girl starts talking to me. A girl? Yes, a girl with horns and skilled tail. I know it sounds odd, but I could have sworn I saw her before. I fainted and then I woke up inside the forest. Hmm. Suki no dono, Narimachan, do you two recall the stories behind the shrine near our village? Forgive me, Hayate-san, I do not recall. 
I know you said it was a place of high spiritual energy. A, a sacred place, but I can remember everything. Sorry, Oji-chan. Oji-chan. That's fine. That's fine. Belongs to Suyuri, a powerful spirit that has watched over our village for as long as we can remember. There's a reason why, unlike the Kitsune, we tend to avoid getting too deep into the forest. I still don't think those pests will be gone for good if you let me go in there and find their home. Probably some damn cave in on the hill or dilapidated old wooden house. Humans and spirits rarely mingle well, even if they meet with good intentions. The fact is, Lad says that he saw a spirit. There is a chance he was there for a reason. Not to mention, did you take a good look at him yet? He seems disoriented and almost out of blood, out of this world. He did seem to be talking gibberish. He claimed to be from a city near here. But there's nothing like that mouse around. He was also talking about some weird co called something weird called a movie, and he knows martial art, mars martial moves that I have never seen before. He is still a pervert. I'm not a pervert. <coughs> I'm. A <coughs> oh shit. <laughs> I'm not a pervert. A guy of my age is innocent, innocently curious. It's perfectly natural. Besides, if you're talking about the panties, they were tossed into my face. I had nothing to do with them. Cinder tyrant. What did you call me? I ought to smash you to pieces, you brat. I'm not a perfect. A guy of my. Oh, wait, it went back. Oh, wait. Now that I think about it, those two Kitsune didn't look like they were just abandoning the panties. But, Ojisan, what does this all mean? I'm not certain. However, I believe it's unlikely. <laughs> I believe it's unlikely that he's working with Kitsune. <laughs> oh man. Still, I have never heard about a human meeting a spirit like Suyuri. I would almost be bold enough to declare him as someone who isn't from our world. Wait, you're trying to say that I'm in a different world now? That would be the most logical explanation. But I've got an important mass to take part in two weeks from now. Well, none of us have ever experienced a situation like this before. Uh, so we'll have to think about how to deal with you, or even if it's possible to get you back to your world. In the meantime, a stay in the cell for a few hours will not hurt him. He did us a one of the village guard and he resisted arrest. He can stay here until the rush for I care, but I suspect the Elder will wish to talk with you once you are done here. Hikage, I'm going for a wash. I, su I suggest you do the same. I would take offense at that, implying that I stink, but that was all. But that was a hell of a run. Those Foxgo can run fast. I still want to know about those techniques, Takiro san. If you do happen to stick around, I might want to get a few rounds with you. Now that I'll be able to go anywhere else for the time being. It's only for a few hours, so we can discuss how to deal with you. Obviously one like yourself would raise quite some questions among the villagers, so we need to convince them first that you are no threat. And that was how I found myself stuck in a jail, while a god responsible for my situation decided to leave me be within myself. What misfortune, as if being sent off to a different world wasn't bad enough. I'm not stuck in a jail with my only company being. With my only company being. A pair of beautiful, magnificent, majestic Kitsune sisters, you lucky boy! A pair of beautiful- Wait a second! <laughs> Hi there, Fenty boy! As I watched, a familiar face appeared at the top of my cell. A blonde woman with golden eyes. As I watched, she flipped over and landed in front of the cell, waving her hands at me. From the side of the cell, the other one appeared. A re-grin, wry grin on her face. Ah! It's the Undies Archers! Oh wait, it's the... Ah! It's the Undies Archers! If you come to reclaim your hostages, they are already back where they belong. Nope! We saw the gods, go gods go into the pool and swipe the maiden's silk again! See? 
At that, she pulled out a pair of lazy silken underwear from her sleeve and stretched it with her thumbs, showing off her panty price to me. Why would she steal panties? It's not even a man. It's not even perverted. You came back all the way to this village to snatch their, uh, snatch their underwear again? Besides, I wouldn't call one of them a maiden. The Sundara Tyrant doesn't fit that bill at all. <laughs> the cutie with the katana? You would be quite surprised. Actually, I happen to believe that she has not even felt her own touch, let alone anyone else. She seems to be fair to uptight for that. As for coming back to the village, we have a debt to settle. L let's not wander into that subject. I can still imagine her katana lingering near my throat. I smiled, I smiled weakly while trying to think about what the kitsune mentioned at the end of her statement. I'm not sure what this debt of yours might be. I do know that you two best get out of here before those two return. You two don't seem to be on a friendly terms with the samurai girls. Wait! If he doesn't know about the debt, then we can just outrun. We, or we can just run. Onesama! Michael, this is not how we do things. Young men, your actions allowed us to escape our situation without harm. It places us in a debt for which we are now repaying you. Michael, do the magic. Hi! Whoa, don't go too fast. Oh no, pressing buttons. The younger girl walked forwards and placed her hands upon the cage lock. She began mumbling something that I couldn't even begin to understand and her hands started glowing brightly. Small dick penis, small dick penis, small dick penis, small dick penis. Being sent to a different world, girls wielding weapons and now fox girls using magic. Next on the list I'm going to find a talk talkative magical sword and be dis destined to save the world. Still I was curious to see what this magic would do to the luck keeping me imprisoned. The glow flared for a moment before fading. There was a hiss and then a sizzle as the lock dripped to the floor and melted from the cage by the magical light. Well done, Maiko-chan. You did very well. Just relax now. I'm not sure what I'm supposed to be most surprised about. The fact a girl just smelted a steel lock or that I'm starting to accept this as a normal thing. Both. Both. You should consider both. This level of magic is extraordinary. Maikujun is quite gifted. But as I have said, we are here to settle our debts. If you would like, we can escort you back to the forest where we encountered you. I do, however, suggest that you decide quickly. The guards do not bathe long. I should know, I have observed them before. Mm. Well, I'm certainly not going to stick around, so I'll gladly accompany you two out of here. Maybe I'll find my way back home then. Lead the way, peeping Tammy. Machiko, Sakurina, Sakurano, Sakurano, Machiko, not Tammy, little bitch. I will kill you if you say that again. Takahiro, but I suggest we keep introductions for when we successfully escape. Very well then. Takakun, follow. As I was stepping out of the cell, the sound of a familiar voice boomed in the distance. Thieves! Crafty kitchen and kleptomaniacs! I'll skin you alive! I think that's our cue to bolt. And with that, the three of us darted out of the prison. Yes, we are leaving the place. Ah, uh, yes, I will save this shit. And that's pretty much all that happens. According to the village villagers, there's supposed to be a shrine somewhere in the forest. It must be the same I visited before I got stuck in this mess. Goodness, that sounds like a terrible situation. I know that spirits like Suyuri like playing with people, but this seems a little bit cruel of her. I would speak with her myself, but we, uh... Kitsune are not allowed on the grounds of the shrine. What? Onesama! I thought we just didn't go there because we got all flushed and blushed whenever you tried talking to Suchan. Sh shut up, Michael! Hmm... I didn't think a penalty would get embarrassed talking to someone. But perhaps you two could show me the way towards the shrine. Somehow the layout of the forest seems different from my world. Which pretty much made Senpai's map useless now. You do not understand. There is much unseen about the ways of us spirits. Takakun, I will try to navigate you to the shrine. But if Suyuri does not want us there, then we will simply not get there. 
The only place we can navigate to directly are our home and the village. Unless I use Gary Kating magic, but that takes a super long time to cast, and I unless I concentrate really hard, it usually ends up just taking us someplace not fun. I pretty much prefer talking a, of taking a route that involves walking than then. But thanks for the offer, Maiko-chan, was it? Hi! Sakurina Maiko! At your service! Yay! My first human friend! Silly Chibiko. Not to doubt your navigation skills are or ending, but... Didn't we cross this path a bit ago? Oh! That's right, we did! Onisama, why have you come back here? What? I thought you were leading us forwards. Wait, I think we if we turn this way, then cut through these trees here, we can... Ah! The girl seemingly disappeared as she stepped down the, between the two tall trunks, and there was a loud splash. I ran towards the trees and looked down to see the girls. To see the girl, arms flailing wildly and few feet up from the bank of a slowing move, slow moving river. Ah! Onesama! Onesama! Quick! Please save! Please! You have to help her! I'm begging you! I'll, I'll do whatever you want! Please save her! Whatever I want! Help! The river is barely moving at all. Surely you won't be telling me that your sister can't... She can't swim! Neither of us can! Please, Lucky you, Sama! Please rescue my sister! For a touch of my pair of boobies! And maybe something else! Something wet and fishy. Guess when a girl is bleeding like that, it's difficult to say no. Smiling weakly, I pull off my jacket and jumped into the river and cold water, cold water making me shiver lightly while I started to swim towards Machiko, who despite the lack of a strong current was slowly getting submerged under the water. Of course, with the worried shouts of Michael, I tried to reach the girl as quickly as possible. It took me a bit before I reached her, but by the time I had grabbed a hold of her and pulled her towards the riverbank, she seemingly had lost consciousness. She's not breathing. I felt a light shiver run across my spine, both from the cold but also from the dreadful thought what might happen to this girl if not something was done soon. But what in the world could I possibly do? CPR? I, I don't know that magic! She's not breathing! Help her! I need to save her, please! Onesama, please get a hold of yourself! Okay, but I need to concentrate. Can you go finding... Uh, can you find something to dry her off? Uh, right! Typical. A mage without a revive spell. As if trying to steal my nerves for what I was about to do, I whispered that just before I leaned in. All I could remember from my first aid training was that the patient had to be in the recovery position and that I had to blow into their mouth and push on their chest. My heart pounded against my own chest as I looked down at the Kitsune girl. I could feel my cheeks heating up as the blush spread across my chest. Clumsily, I put her into what I hoped was the right position, and slowly I lowered myself towards her face. My lips parted. Oh my god, oh Jesus. Oh, <coughs> oh move on. And move on. Uh -huh. If you were this desperate for a kiss, you could have just asked. I know I am a beautiful, live creature, but pushing me into a river just so you can save me is a bit much, Takakun. I, I doubt of you without such uh, ulterior motives. <laughs> Thank you, O oh valiant hero. For your rescue, I must admit, I am not the strongest swimmer, but you know. It is often better to get permission from the maiden you've rescued before you claim them as your reward. Silly. We had a choice to make. Either I claimed your lips or death would claim you instead. A bold choice. Where's Maiko? I hope she didn't try to save me first. She is even worse at swimming than I am. Of course you reassure her. I end up going after you instead. She should be heading over here right now. Hmm. I think we have enough time. So how about it, Takakun? My little sister will be back in a few minutes, and I know a boy like you probably has never kissed a girl before. So how about it? Want to claim this maiden's lips? Don't make me toss you back into the river. 
Uh huh, such a shame too. I was looking forward to finding out just how your lips tasted too. I'm not sure I want to find out the flavor of a wet fox. <laughs> Jeez, man, he's he's got a strong will. He's like stone. Oh, I assure you, I taste a lot better when I'm wet. Oh man, what is this? What is this game? Why does this happen? Oh man. Somehow, I doubt we're talking about the same thing. I felt my cheeks flushing up lightly at Matiga's comments. Awkwardly scratching my cheek at her teasing comments. Ah, so he is affected. No one can resist. No one. Besides, at this rate you're going to catch a cold. Then maybe you should start warming me up, Takakun. Yeah. More importantly, we need to get out of those soggy clothes. Oh my! Takakun, so forward! Please, won't you unbutton my top for me? If, if, if you insist. My thin fingers shook as I reached down to the lace of her bodice. I was blushing brightly and my head was spinning as I felt my fingers touch the cloth. As I did that, there came a whoosh behind me and I felt something heavy impact into my body. I couldn't stop my body toppling forwards and where I was expecting a splash, I instead felt a nasty impact on the back of my skull. Oh no, Sama! I brought the- Oh no! The hero! I could barely focus as the blonde Kitsune began to fuss over me, but it was no good. Between running my butt off all day, the Cinderella tyrant, the rescue, and now the blow to the head, I felt my slip into unconsciousness. Oh... I don't know if I should call him lucky, or very unlucky. Having things like that happen to you? My god. It felt like hours when I finally regained consciousness, and yet the first thing I noticed when I started to wake up was that something soft was resting, uh, resting against me. For a moment I was curious about what caused the soft sensation, but little did I expect my question should have been phrased differently. Who was causing, causing that soft sensation? Ooh. Oh! Mm. My god! M Machiko! She's naked. I whispered softly. Oh, she <laughs> hated Okay. I whispered softly, my voice easily betraying my surprised thoughts at seeing the fox girl resting beside me. Not only resting! Of course it didn't help that she was stark naked, my gaze drifting along her features. I didn't really put much thought into it until now, but she really was beautiful. Maybe this is a chance. I've been a little bit curious about something till now, and designed to get the answer I was seeking. I lightly lifted my hand towards her head, my fingertips carefully caressing along her ear. I I've got a bad mind. I'm dirty as hell. I thought he was going to do something else. But I can understand this. To my surprise, the fur on them was real. What made me able to think of only one explanation. So, she's a real kitsune. And yet, while I was looking down at how peacefully she was sleeping, it was difficult for me to imagine she had been one of those troublemakers terrorizing the nearby village with their pranks. She almost looked like just an incredibly cute girl. A naked one at that also. Thought of her lack of clothes, my cheek flushed up into a brighter red color. Mm, no, sorry, not again. I is she dreaming? Feeling kind of amused, I was about to poke her cheek gently, but the sound of footsteps made me quickly draw back my hand. Ah, Takahiro, you're awake! Shh, don't wake up, Onesama. She's a light sleeper, and she's been super tired lately. S sure, but Michael chan care to explain why your sister is sleeping next to me and n n without clothes on? Hehe, <laughs> you took look super cute cuddling, cuddling together earlier. Onesama said that you, sh that you said about it being important to take off clothes. So she took off hers off. So she took her off. Hers off. Oh my god, I am cannot speak. And then we took yours off. And then she was trying to keep you both warm by getting under the cover and laying in the sun. 
However, in the end she fell asleep. You, you watched me just now? Yep! You were both sleeping soundly. It was super adorable. I want to cuddle you both too. But an air man told me off for cuddling her in her sleep before. I uh, think I'd understand why. She does look rather adorable when she's sleeping like that. Let's keep it that way for a bit, but I took a deep breath and as with my face as red as tomato, I was about to open my mouth to say something when, my, when suddenly Michael exclaimed cheerfully, We brought you home to our mansion. We brought you to a spare room because it gets a load of light. It was, I was only watching you for a bit, then I got bored, so I went, so I went and made some soup. Onesama always makes me soup when I feel bad. Do you want some? Sure, I could go for some soup, but Maiko-chan, before that, I need to address something pretty serious with you. Hmm? I need you to go and get my clothes because I'm kinda naked here. Kind of a problem. Don't want to show you my balls and hanging banana, banana peel. I lifted the blanket lightly, my eyes shifting their gaze downwards when my face turned from a blushing state downright into a perfect imitation of a tomato. Though my thoughts were on my own predicament, I couldn't help but notice that Michael seemed to lean a little to one side, trying to peek under the blanket, which only made me blush even more. I think I'm going to stay under the blanket for a bit. Could you please bring back my clothes? Ah, but you might wake on this if you stay here awake. But if you insist, fine. I'll go get your clothes. You're no fun. I want to see what a human looks like. And Onesama forbid me from peeking. Please just hurry. The girl almost skipped to the door. Giggling to herself, the door slid open and she hopped outside for a moment, vanishing behind the paper screen. Once I confirmed that Mako had left the room to grab my clothes, I turned my gaze sideways, focusing back on the beautiful expression of the sublime slumbering Kitsune. For a moment I thought back about the things I heard in the village, about how those girls were supposed to be evil spirits and troublemakers. Surely stealing underwear isn't exactly a nice thing to do, but when I look at her like this, I can picture her as anything but a normal girl. While the temptation to lift a blanket was strong, I felt a little nervous about the thought. <laughs> why? Oh why? Why would he be nervous? Just a naked girl. Still as much as I tried to hold myself back, I couldn't rest the temptation of turning to my side to get a, m get a better glimpse of her. Gingerly, my hands shake shaking slightly, I reached forward to take a hold of the blanket. No, Takahiro. Neither a gentleman or a hero peeks at a sleeping lady. Ah, your heart is stone. And yet. <laughs> Who are you kidding? This is a once in a lifetime chance! I'm gonna do what I want! <laughs> in the end, the very little devil within me won the mor morality struggle. And with shaking hands, I reached forwards and tried to lift the blanket. Stop! Yikes! I don't want any blackberries. My heart was pounding against my chest. My head was spinning round as I dropped the blanket. She was still dreaming, mumbling her way in her sleep. But she had frightened the living daylights out of me. Michael-chan returned and deposited my now dry clothes in my lap. She smiled and at me and lingered for a few moments. Lin and lingered for a few moments, as if expecting me to begin changing. Oh, of course the soup! I'll get it now, but don't change too slowly, I bet you hate me coming in and sneaking at peak. Never expect a guy to take as, mu as much time cheating as a girl. It's a fundamental law among peeping Toms and Tammies. Wait, you were planning to peek on me? I realize now that perhaps Michael was more like to her sister than I had, had expected. <laughs> It sure sounds like you've got experience at peeking on people, Takahiro. And well, maybe I was thinking about it. I'm kind of curious what the difference is between us Kitsune and humans. Like, it was amazing how easily you carried Onesama out of the water. Is it because you're a human? Uh, I, I don't have any experience peeking on people. Also, I think it might be more because I'm a guy. We tend to be stronger than girls. Not to mention, I practice judo. So it would be awkward if I can't carry a girl like your sister. Dudo? What's a dudo? 
G U D O. It's a sport of sorts, albeit it's also known as a manner to protect yourself and others. Is that why you tried to save Onesama? Well, that's not really what judo is about. Ultimately, saving a damsel in distress is all about a man's pride. Yes, the man's pride is strong with this one. Oh, then can you show me your man's pride? And just what exactly are you trying to see, my little sister? Ah, she woke up. Oh no, her naked body is gone. Oh, oh no, Sama! I, I, I wasn't. That's not true. Uh, the soup, the soup's still cooking. I need to tend to it. The young Akisune scrambled to her feet and dashed out of the room at high speed, her tail comically hanging between her legs as she did so. I turned to Machiko, blushing faintly, averting my eyes abru abruptly so she could pull the sheets back up around herself. Ah, I, I see you finally woke up, Machiko-chan. With you two hollering about dodo and soup, how could I possibly remain asleep? Am I glad to see you are well, Takakun? Forgive me for taking such measures, but I feared I was losing temperature too quickly, and I needed to warm in a hurry. At least it was a more, at least it is a more enjoyable sleep than you would have had in the cell. I doubt the Cinder Tyrant, was it, would give you the same service. L I. Let's say the hospitality was uh, appre appreciated. I'm glad to hear that. If you like the change, there's a screen just over there. I shall avert my eyes while you walk, of course. I, I guess one of us has to do it. While well, I watch Machiko close her eyes, hands covering her face as if she tried to reassure me she wouldn't peek, I climbed from under the blanket and made my way towards the close. Picking them up, and soon as I reached the paper screen, started changing. If you could be so good, my rope should be upon the dresser. Could you pass them to me over the screen? It would speed matters greatly. Uh, uh, sure, let me give them to you. After looking around for a moment, I found a aforementioned rope, nicely folded up on the dress. My heart skipping a beat as I took a hold of them, and turned towards the screen to hand them over. Musing softly. Say, Majiko-chan, how come you two were causing troubles in the village? You two don't lo look like bad people to me. Well, it is a touch complicated. Maiko was researching a spell she wanted to perform, one that would allow us easier access to certain things we need, and one of the ingredients was maiden's milk. The only silk I could think of was, well, you experienced firsthand earlier. Ma maiden silk? I, I guess I understand why you thought of that, but isn't maiden silk another term for a wedding sash? It is in my world at least. As I said this, the woman appeared around the side of the screen. Uh, I never knew that. How my life has betrayed me. What did you not know, Onesama? What did you not know, Onesama? The, the maiden smell silk. It is a wedding sash. All our work was for naught. Oh, well. At least it's easy to get it. I just have to marry Takakun. What? A few minutes later. Married? Are they getting married?